watercolour grey mixing. That's what we're doing in this video. Welcome back to my channel. If we haven't met before, my name is Michelle and on this channel you'll find all things watercolour, a little bit of mixed media, colour mixing videos like this one. Please do consider subscribing. If you click the bell notification, you can get notified every time I have a new video for you. I make one free video a week here on YouTube with extra content on Saturdays for my Patreon subscribers. Now, some people may think grey is dull and boring. I actually think it's a really beautiful colour and it's incredibly useful. Um, when you're a watercolourist, it's really important to get the hang of neutrals and people can find it a little bit hard to mix neutral colours. So that's what we're looking at today. This is actually going to be the first of two videos. So in this video, in the first part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swatch some of my tube greys. So these are ready mixed greys. I'm also going to show you how you can add other colours and adjust those greys to make um, new colours, but also to make other greys that are just a little bit more flexible. So you're going to expand your range. In the second video, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see that one. In the second video, what I'm going to do is actually mix some new greys from scratch. So by the end of both of these videos, you should have a lovely large range of greys suitable for all occasions. So let's look first at the colour that you're most likely to find in a beginner's set and that's Payne's Grey. This is a really, really versatile colour. I have done another video just about Payne's Grey so you can watch that one as well. I'll put a link to that one above and also in the video description and that one gives you some more colour mixes as well. But we're going to look at Payne's Grey next. It's such a useful colour on its own. I almost have it in my blues actually. I don't put it on my palette with the greys and with the earth colours. I put it with the blues. It's got so much blue pigment in, but that means it's a really, really useful colour to mix from. So let's have a look at Payne's Grey and see what we can do with it. So let's look at Payne's Grey. So Payne's Grey is a staining colour and it's a very blue based grey. What this means is it looks a lot cleaner than black. Black can often look rather brownish and rather dull Payne's Grey is a great alternative to using black in your paintings. It's also a great colour for mixing because it has so much blue pigment in that you can actually use it for mixing things that you would mix blues with. So for instance, you could mix a green or a purple from it. When it's watered down, it's quite a good colour for getting shadow on buildings. It can have rather a lot of black pigment in, so it can be a little bit... Um, too harsh for things like flower painting. Does really well for those stark shadows on white buildings, but I wouldn't necessarily use it for botanical work. It's also great for landscape painting and for skies. Now, whilst you can use it um, for the actual sky colour along with perhaps mixing some blue in, I like to use it to mix into um, a pink and then we can make a really strong sort of stormy purple. And this is great for cloud shadows in stormy skies. So let me show you how I do it. So I've got here some quinacridone magenta. This one is by Jackman's Art Materials. Do remember you can get a discount code off of all Jackman's paints, including the new floral set that I have designed. If you click in the video description, you will find a link. So this colour here is um, between pink and purple. Now you can use any pink to adjust your Payne's Grey with, or any purple really. I like to use like the quinacridone pinks, quinacridone magenta, or something like a permanent rose. So you get those real pinky colours and then what we're going to do is put the Payne's Grey in and just the tiniest touch of the pink goes in, so not too much. What you get then is you get these beautiful stormy purples. So there we are with just a little bit in. Let's add a bit more. Look at that. Absolutely fantastic for those stormy cloud shadows you get in those rather more moody skies. So that's our Payne's Grey and we've mixed it with quinacridone magenta to make stormy purple greys. Next up, you couldn't find a colour which is more different to Payne's Grey than Davy's Grey. This is a different animal altogether. So I'm going to show you now what Davy's Grey is and what it's good for and how we can adjust it to make it even more useful. So next up, we've got Windsor and Newton Davy's Grey. If you were wondering, by the way, what brand the Payne's Grey was, that's Talon's Rembrandt Payne's Grey. The Daniel Smith Payne's Grey is somewhat similar. It's a little more on the purple side and the Talon's is a little more on the blue side, but there's really very little between them. So this is my Davies Grey. 
Now this is almost a polar opposite to my Payne's Grey. It's a very opaque, weak, pale colour and it's a grey that tends towards green. Now I first found out about this grey when I was looking into the colours that botanical artists use. So this is often used by botanical artists to make shadows on petals or to otherwise add those subtle colour shadows. So you can see, even when used fairly strongly like that, it's nothing like the Payne's Grey. And it has a definite greenish tinge to it. So I'm going to water it down here. Also really good for those kind of delicate, sort of misty mornings. A really beautiful, delicate colour. Somewhat granular, but very, very subtle. And as I said, slightly opaque, very weak and greenish. So this is nice, but what if we want to make it a bit warmer and a bit less green? So the opposite to green is red, but if we put red in, it's just gonna go kind of a mucky brown color. So what we're gonna actually do is add a tiny, tiny amount of alizarin crimson. So I have Windsor and Newton permanent alizarin crimson, and I've also got permanent Madder Lake by Talons Rembrandt. I have to say when these were swatched, I could barely find a difference between them. I haven't actually looked at the pigments, but um, certainly on paper, they look, they look exactly the same. So I'll show you the alizarin here and it's a much more rose based color. The thing with alizarin crimson is if you have a good brand, you can get a very lovely clean color. But I have to say in some of the cheaper brands in the cheap sets, they can, and some of the students quality ones, they can be very, it can be a very mucky sort of dirty color. So do make sure that you've got a good one. So I've just added the very tiniest amount to my Davies Grey and you can see how it's just slightly warmed that up. I'll put a little more of the pink in and look at that. So all we've really done is knock the green out of that colour which can make it much much more useful both for your botanical flower painting but also for those misty landscapes. Next up super deep, super dark and rather gothic we have Graphite Grey. Can I just ask you, if you're enjoying this video and getting some value from it, could you please click the like button? YouTube rewards channels that get audience interaction, so if you like, share, subscribe, or even leave me a comment, YouTube will push this video out to more people, my channel will grow, and I'll be able to make more free videos for you. So here's my graphite grey, and with the Payne's grey, we had that strong sort of clean blueness to it. It's quite granular, and it's quite cold, without going into those blues. So what I'll do is I'll water it down a little bit. And it is, as you would expect, just the color of graphite pencil. So I don't think with this color that putting paler colors in it will really work very well because they'll just start to look a little bit dirty. So what we're going to do instead is we're gonna do one of my favorite mixes. We're gonna mix some Venetian red in. So you can do this with the Payne's gray as well, but it will go rather purple. Whereas with this graphite gray, it'll stay a true gray and we'll get this lovely, lovely warm effect. So this is Venetian red and you can see it's very much the color of house bricks, or red roofs. So we're going to take advantage of this by mixing it in with our graphite to make a color that's really really good for things like roof felt. So let's swatch this. I've put a little bit of the red in there and that's just kind of pushed it slightly warmer. But what we're going to do now is put a lot more red in and we're starting to get these fabulous roof colors also good for certain types of rocks. So a really great color for rocks, bricks and rooftops. So imagine a graphite grey if it was a little bit more mystical, a little bit lighter and a bit more shimmery. We have Daniel Smith Iridescent Moonstone. So here's my Iridescent Moonstone. It's not unrelated actually, certainly in looks, to the graphite grey in that it's kind of a grey silver. I do struggle with the camera to show the shimmer on these. I'll, um, I'll maybe take some footage in a minute with them kind of um, moving around on the camera and see if you can pick up that shimmer. And sometimes as well, it's something that doesn't show up much until it's dry. It's uh, kind of counterintuitive, but often with these shimmer paints, the less you put on, the more you see. I've had experiences in paintings where I've layered them and they've actually looked sort of less, um, less impactful than when they were thin. So it's good to go easy on these. The other thing I've discovered, particularly with this Daniel Smith paint, with the iridescent paints, and it's the strangest thing, is um, I nearly always squeeze out my paints on palettes and, you know, allow them to dry like this. The, the Daniel Smith iridescents just do not want to re-wet. They almost, um, almost go solid. So if you do have these, I would suggest keeping them in the tubes rather than, uh, rather than squeezing them out on the palettes. Again, it's a very gray color, so I don't think putting light colors in it is really going to hack it with this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna ramp up the gothic, um, the gothic element of this, and we're gonna go with some indigo. 
So indigo is a fabulous sort of blue-black and uh, let's get a bit of it and swatch it. So here's our indigo and I'm going to drop some into the uh, into the Daniel Smith here. I believe this indigo is Winsor & Newton just from memory. It will as well go much darker so it is a staining colour. It can go as dark as the Payne's Grey. So fabulous colour there. Really fantastic for painting things like ravens and these sort of birds that have a lot of black in. I'm going to mix it in with my Daniel Smith. So I don't know if you can see that on camera, but absolutely beautiful. It's it's such a gorgeous colour. And I want you to consider if you can't afford a full set of iridescent colours or a full set of shimmer paints, maybe just get the um, you know the neutral colours, perhaps the silvers and the golds, and you can adjust them with other colours. They sometimes almost separate in that the uh, the colour sinks in and the shimmer kind of sits on top. But it can be really interesting. I'm going to mix this one a little bit darker and see how that looks too. So we'll swatch this one here. It really does remind me of those kind of metallic colours that you get cars in. Absolutely beautiful. If you love the shimmer on the Daniel Smith Iridescent Moonstone, you're going to love this one. I've got Jackman's Art Materials Pearlescent Silver. So not technically a grey, but I really couldn't resist including this one. So this is Jackman's Pearlescent Silver, and it really is just like liquid silver. So let's place a bit of it on here. So you can see it's lighter and brighter than the Daniel Smith. This one is more grey and this one is definitely more of a bright silver. So I'm going to water it down a little bit and swatch it. And as I said, sometimes when you put them on thinner, they even look more sparkly rather than less sparkly, probably because the paper's showing through a little bit. Now a colour like this is going to be great with a strong, bright staining colour in. So you really could drop anything into this, but I'm going to go for some emerald green. So this is some White Nights by St. Petersburg and this colour, they call it emerald, but it is no doubt some form of phthalo green and it's incredibly bright and staining. Of course you could use um, any staining colour, you could use one of the transparent yellows or you could even use something like a, a bright opera pink, but I think this green is going to look particularly lovely mixed in with the silver. So let's go light first of all and it's really, really pretty. Now I'll mix it stronger and we've still got that lovely sparkly silver quality to it. So when you're looking at adjusting your pearlescent and your shimmer colours, do consider the uh, the qualities of the colour to start with. So this one was more grey and so I went for a cooler, more sort of dramatic colour. This one is lovely and light and fresh so I'm going for those more um, fresh, clear staining colours. So a really lovely selection of greys there and we've adjusted to make some beautiful new colours. I'm hoping if I lift them towards the camera, I'm sort of heading towards those shimmer colours and perhaps you can see the beauty of the little silver pigments in there. Of course, there are lots of other greys that I haven't had a chance to cover in this video. So if you have any tube greys, any ready-made greys that you really enjoy using, please do leave those suggestions in the uh, in the comments of this video. Be really interested to read those and perhaps I'll make a video about those in the future. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you get notified when part two of this video comes out. If the video has been out for more than a few days, I'll link to it on the end cards. In the meantime, you can watch another one of my colour mixing videos right here.